Hello, traders. This is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Daily Roundup webinar. I hope everybody's having a great trading session. Um, so we're keeping an eye on the euro. The euro's come off um, its highs. We were trading pretty much where we thought we were going to go today. Uh, we kind of overextended past the um, the um, one seventeen thirty. If you guys remember the resistance that we talked about this morning on the the on the more on the <laughs> the face webinar. Uh, we overshot it by about, you know, 14 pips and we're coming off. One of the reasons why the euro is coming off right now is because um, I guess there are some issues right now with the, um, uh, the, the EU recovery fund. Uh, this, I'm going to read this to you from Bloomberg. Uh, we observe with concern that the number of different blockades in the budget negotiations seem to be increasing rather than decreasing a spokesperson for the German Presidency of the Council of European Union says, uh, when asked to comment about ongoing negotiations regarding the EU's 1.8 trillion euro budget and recovery plan funds, uh, timetables in danger of slipping, a delay of the EU budget and recovery fund is becoming increasingly likely. We are dealing with a very polarized debate. So, you know, the euro slipped because of that. I don't know how much you know, near-term damage that's going to do to the euro because, uh, I mean, if you think about it, that's going to, you know, something's still going to get done. It's not like, you know, something's not going to get done. So the, the euro is probably going to consolidate a little bit. But the, the thing that I think is the bigger concern is tonight and the, um, the debate and obviously the end of month, end of quarter flows that are going through the markets. That, that's that's going to be the biggest risk to the euro right now uh, the the eu recovery fund yeah there's some blockades yeah they're you know you got you know austerity uh the 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 the, the frugal four it's probably gonna you know raise some ruckus here and there but overall you know the recovery fund is going to get done at some point so i wouldn't worry about it too much as far as being a negative longer term negative on the euro but what's uh, what's what's immediately in focus, like I said, is going to be uh, the the, the uh, debate tonight, and uh, also um, um, the debate tonight, and and you know obviously the upcoming elections and whatnot. Now let's talk a little bit about the S and P and where we're at. So the S and P uh, has come off, um, you know, where you're in between fibs, which uh, okay, uh, I you know I I couldn't really argue we were going to turn where we turn. You know, there's some horizontal resistance, but we did, and the, the stock market's come off a little bit. Overall, um, you know, there's there's uh, there's talk of what you know tonight. Well, what if Biden does well? You know, and what we were talking about is if Biden does well, and um, you know, for the debate, uh, you know, that's going to be negative um, stocks. But there's also been another argument the other way, which I think we should talk about, the polls right now are wide and it's becoming increasingly likely that, that um, there's gonna be a contested election, right? So if, you know, uh, let's say Donald Trump loses by a smaller margin, he's gonna contest it and that's gonna be a disaster, right? I mean, we, we, we already are prepared for that. If the margins tighten, that might be viewed as risk off. Meaning if Joe Biden does not so good and, uh, and, and Trump does really well, the, um, the, the polls may tighten a little bit, which may be more risk off for the market. So I'm seeing arguments for both directions. And so I, uh, the, the point I'm trying to make here is we should be watching the debates tonight and just watching for the market reaction reacting to it rather than assuming you know which way it's going to go because like i said there are arguments for both um for for both outcomes so i i don't want to get too married to an idea that oh you know this is happening so i've got to be bullish you know risk or bearish risk because this is happening i, I don't want to get into that i don't want to box myself into that situation that doesn't make sense um, you know, the cable's been, all, you know, kind of flip-flopping all over the place. One of the things that's moving, I think, the euro dollar 
is the Euro Sterling move. And that move has really um, fueled some of the Euro rally today. Uh, and one of the reasons why the Euro dollar is so strong. Uh, and it's not just the Euro dollar. I mean, look at, you know, the Euro Aussie has recovered. Uh, the Euro New Zealand has recovered. The Euro Canadian is up 130 pips today. I mean, that, that, that's a you know, big move for the Euro um, Canadian. Uh, let me delete all this stuff. I don't know what all that stuff is from is from earlier or wasn't even a chart that I was really looking for. But um, like I said, the Euro, it, it, it's not just, it's not just the Euro dollar. It's the Euro on the crosses that's really rallying. And I, and I think a lot of the, the bounce from the Euro pound has, uh, has played into this move. We already knew if you're, if you're using Forex analytics, you already knew that the Euro sterling was bouncing from those levels as um, you know, the, that was a 618 retracement yesterday. You can see it right here at the 90, 90 and a quarter, basically, and we bounced pretty aggressively. Uh, that that I, 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 I could argue that that's you know, helping the euro hold its bid today, okay? Um, you know, looking around, the, the Kiwis rolled off of its uh, resistance. I, I, was, I added to my short there earlier and cl closed it already, took some out of it. But you can see how we're, you know, this is a big double top. So we were just testing the neckline today and it, it made sense that we, we sold off a little bit here. Um, the dollar Canadian, very strong as crude as weak. And you guys should probably be very cognizant of where crude's at. And the reason why I bring this up is because if crude oil continues to weaken, that's going to, you know, build the argument that 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 the dollar canadian should be breaking out above this 134 20 level um is it going to break out i'm hoping so because i'm long but you know it's it's something that i think we all should be watching especially like i said if crude oil uh continues to stay weak where's crude there's crude if crude oil continues to stay weak we broke down out of that that triangle um let's see anything else that i really wanted to cover uh, Aussie, you know, we hit the 38% retracement and we, we knew that that was going to be a resistance. It did, it did hold. So just keep that in mind. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, other than that, I think we have to wait for today's, uh, you know, today's, uh, uh, debate tonight's debate. Uh, let's see. I got a question that came in from, uh, Dimitri said, Hey Blake dollar Swiss test of the 92 level barely holds though. Yeah. I don't know how to trade the Swiss. I, I mean, you're right. I mean, we held the 92 as expected. Um, the Swiss is kind of, it's, it's, it's off my radar because uh, like I said, I don't know how to trade it. I don't know if I should be buying Swiss francs because you know, we've got risk off or we got risk on and I should be shorting Swiss. I really, I don't know how to approach it. So therefore, for me, I've just kind of left it alone as a result. You know, because, and I'm, I'm sure you guys are probably trading the dollar Swiss better than I am right now. Although I, I have to admit, it's been pretty technical. I mean, you know, we knew 90, 50, 92, broke through 92, went to 93, which is 161% extension, bounced off the 92. I mean, it's been very technical. I just haven't been trading it because I just don't know how to take the approach to it right now at these levels. You know, I, I, I just don't, I don't have a good solid argument one, one, one way or the other. Um, all right, guys. Well, hey, remember, um, if you guys are not, Forex Analytics subscribers, make sure you take advantage of the new pricing. And for those of you guys that are Forex Analytics subscribers, thank you so much for your continued support. I'll see you guys in the chat room and um, good luck tonight. I'll see you in the chat room for the debate. I'll be around. All right. See you there. Bye-bye.